freak accident during a high school game left the teenager largely paralyzed. Jared Williams is now paralyzed. Jared Williams' life will likely never be the same. A helmet hit the Pinkston High School safety in the neck. Faces a long, painful recovery. Life of a young football player changed forever. Changed forever. Changed forever. You know, I, I remember talking to a guy right after the accident. One thing I told him, I said, you know, you've been coaching all these years, and, uh, you know, you go to coaching school, you go to clinics. And I, I told him, I said, you can learn all the X and O's, you can learn all about this kind of defense, that kind of defense, this offense, that offense. But I told him, I said, you can, I mean, nothing can prepare you for anything like this. You know, nothing. I mean, nothing, nothing you've ever been through can, 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 can you know, just can pre prepare you for that. This particular tragedy really united the community. And so the blessing was, wasn't just the money coming in, which was great, don't get me wrong, but my goal was to teach children to support other children, to help each other out. And so I saw a level of, of kindness that I've never seen in my building before. I saw a level of respect for each other that I've never seen before. And I think that has to do with the situation with Jared. They didn't know us. They just knew that my son played football for their, for their high school that's in their community. And for that kind of love to come out of one 14-year-old playing football for a school that's been in a community for years, for them to have that kind of love for not just my son, but for their school, Pinkston High School, and their community, it's awesome. It just, you don't see it. It's almost like it's just, it's a fairy tale. Looking back at Jared's injury and, and all that has come from it and all the good that's come from it, you can't help but think that there was a bigger plan. Um, again, these injuries are tremendously rare uh, when you think about the scope of things. And, and Jared making a routine tackle that he makes all the time, you know, this time didn't get up from it. Uh, when you look back though, clearly Jared's made the best of it and has had a tremendous impact on a, on a community with it. Here's Jared Williams who probably won't meet one-tenth of the people that helped him and his mother out. And yet, he was able to, because of his injury, pull all of these people together to work towards a common purpose. And that is a really unique thing. So um, I think obviously he grew through that whole process, but not only that, Dallas, and its citizenry and the students that are going to be its future citizenry all grew as a result of it. For them to come together, for a teacher's assistant and a 14-year-old child that's playing varsity football and for a community to say, oh, this happened to him, we have to do something. We have to show them that we are real and we believe in our community. And that's what they did. They pulled together and they made it happen. It's a year after my accident, exactly a year. And I was laying in the bed watching football. And one of my teammates from last year called me and told me that this guy had got hurt playing football for Molina at our game. And I asked, was he OK? And he was like, no, nah, dog, he ain't moving at all. And I was like, OK, just tell the coaches to get his mom's number. and." We'll be there as soon as possible to come see him. We've been very busy in the Dallas area. One year to the date of Jared's injury, we had another young man, DeAndre Preston, from uh, Dallas Molina High School that suffered a spinal cord injury. It ironically, he was playing Pinkston this year. One year from the date that Jared was hurt, and my kid uh, has an injury on his neck the same way. He ruptured three and four in his neck. 
and he's uh, paralyzed today. I went to go see DeAndre that, I, if it wasn't a day after, it was a couple of days after. It was like two days after. I told him I would be there for him if he needed anything and he could call us if his mom or if he needed anything. Dallas community has been strapped by stepping up and helping Jerry, but now we have another young man that needs that same type of help. Let's don't fall short you know, with him. We, we need uh, some help for DeAndre to change his life and make his life a lot better. Um, we can do it. I just want him to know that your family and your schoolmates, they're going to be there for you, especially the ones that really care for you. They love you, and you don't want to be that person to be like, I don't need you right now because I'm going through something. You want them to actually be there for you. State of Texas, you figure there's over 300 4 and 5A schools. Uh, each school has three teams. That's 30 games per school, time 350. And in the last uh, 10 years, there's been 17 neck injuries. So the odds are really against something like that happening. But it doesn't take away when it happens. It, it's it's so uh, dramatic on everybody. I mean, the community, the family, the coaches, uh, the players. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's shake, it shakes everybody. Injuries like this haunt coaches. We, we worry about them all the time. We care about our kids so much, and it's, I've been lucky this has never happened to me. You don't want that to happen to any kid. You know, I have four boys that play football. One of them played for the University of Texas, and, and uh, one in high school, and two young ones, and they all play. And every Saturday or every Friday, whenever I go out there, you know, it's not in the forefront, but it's always in the back of your mind that, hey, this could possibly happen, and you know, and the, and, and the unfortunate thing, no matter how much coaching, how much how much training you have, you never really prepare for a situation like this. Every athlete is just one play away from getting injured, I guess, but they're also one play away from having success. And football and all athletics teaches kids the positive things about life, and we know there are going to be people get killed on the street in a car, and we don't quit driving cars. You don't quit playing football because someone gets hurt. Yeah, for all kids who. Who are playing football right now, they should know a lot about their bodies and actually listen to the coaches because what they're telling you is is real and they're just not telling you that just to be telling you. When someone goes down like this, initially there, there is some help. Our experience has been within the first six months to a year, there's a lot of help. But what happens is as these young men continue with their lives, people go on. It's only human nature, people go on with their lives. And these young men become forgotten athletes. In a couple of weeks, this will kind of settle down and no one will visit him anymore. So make sure you visit him within a month. And you know, things like that are the things that I was throwing out to the kids because when you deal with something at this level, everybody steps up, everybody wants to be a part. And I wanted the kids to understand that we needed to be there for the long haul, not just the instant first couple of weeks, but the whole time that he needed us, we needed to be present. We're gonna be gone in five years. You know, their life goes on, our life goes on. Hopefully, different organizations take over where this organization leaves off and, and stays with him because he needs to have a productive life. Gridiron Heroes, is going to do everything that they can to help these young men, to make sure they're not forgotten. We're different from a lot of organizations like the Christopher Reeves Foundation, the Miami Project. Uh, a lot of those national organizations raise money for research only. And we work with the families that have been impacted by the injury itself. What we want to do is to make sure that they're not forgotten and uh, be a part of those kids' life, not only initially, but long term. College and professional, they have so much support. And we have to go make the support for our kids. This is serious, and it's not just my son. It's children all over Texas, all over the world. This is happening to you. And we need to let people know that it's serious. This is a world thing. This is not a South Dallas thing or a West Dallas thing. This is a world thing because kids all over the country come in this type of uh, infliction. So this is a great thing. It kind of made us all stronger as a team because you've never seen so many people with different backgrounds come together as a whole. 
The Project 24 for Jarrett was just awesome. You know, that was a great example on how a community come together and respond to help a young man that's been injured. The community stood up and said, we're going to do it. We're going to help. We can do something. The word pass it on is a term that we all need to remember when it comes to these kids because we've got something we can pass on. Work, labor, money, time, prayers, we need it all. I see life as a gift, not as a privilege, because you don't have to be on this earth. It's a privilege to. Anything could be taken away from you at any time. You know, one of the other things that, that we take for granted is the being able to just to hug someone, to lift your arms, to hug your mom and your dad. You don't know what to say to that parent. I mean, you, you have no idea the feeling to go to that hospital and, you know, have to look in the eyes when something like that is happening. If I could trade in all the gifts, the cars, the house, to get my son to play football again and for him to get out of that chair and walk again, I would do it. I still love football as much as I did before my accident. Football is still a big part of my life. If he can be positive and keep a positive attitude to keep pushing, what I'm going through in life is nothing. In order for him to get better and be independent, he has to want to do it. Something happened to Jerry that he had no control over, but he's willing to keep pushing Keep trying, keep the faith that one day he will be all right. Not necessarily walking, but being able to do a lot of things on my own, living a good life, a godly life. I don't know my purpose in life. Only God knows it.